a pretty interesting Marvel topic that I want to go over with you guys. But first, let's take a look at the top 50 comics for December 2021. So this is based on comic book store data. And what I found funny about this is 21 out of the top 50 are all Spider-Man or Batman related, like Batman, Venom, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Batman, Spider-Man, Batman, Venom, Dark Knights of Steel, Bad Girls, uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Batman, Joker, Nightwing, Batman, Catwoman. It's, it's a lot of Batman stuff because DC is trying to make some money on comics. So what they're doing is they're pretty much just making all of their books about Batman. I just find it funny. Like there's never been so many Batman books on shelves. I don't think until like recently, because literally half of their books are Batman books. Now it's, it's crazy. Eventually it's going to, it's going to hurt the brand and a lot of the other ones are going to fall off too. Maybe. I don't know. Batman and Spider-Man sell pretty consistently. I just think it's ridiculous to have so many on the shelves at one time. But now let's take a look at Marvel Comics because they're hiring a new editor, an associate editor. You basically work for Cracker Jacks too, by the way. Uh, They're looking for one, but listen, uh, depending on who you are, uh, you are not welcome to apply for this job. This is the problem with the comic book industry. And I like to show off this graph because it's hilarious. This is IDW Media Holdings, a comic book company that's public. And you go back to January 20th, 2017. The stock used to be worth $51 as of today. It's gone up a little bit. It's gone up a little bit because a few days ago, it was only $2. Now it's $2.29. But my point here is you you see what the orange man did to this comic book company. And I think that this is probably a good representation of the entire industry itself. So, I mean, this is where we're at. And it's not stopping anytime soon. Vida Ayala, who is not a very good writer. In fact, some of the worst comic books I've ever read come from Vida. But Vida gets a lot of work. Uh, hand over fist books every month. Uh, Vita is announced as a writer. Comics are not good. By the way, don't bother anybody here. Leave everybody alone. Let's just talk about this uh, topic here. Uh, this is not. This is not uh, just a. This is not just a one-off thing. A lot of comic book writers and artists that are horrible uh, keep getting work, mostly because I'm guessing that they don't charge very much. I'm guessing the page rate is very low for some of these people. But they get a lot of work. And then, you know, you get uh, you get a little bit of nod from the Twitter crowd, too. So Marvel put this out, that they're looking for an associate editor. Okay. The job, the job description, which has now been removed from Disney's website, stated Marvel Entertainment is seeking a pop culture expert to join Marvel Digital Media in the role of an associate editor responsible for the creation and curation of content on Marvel.com. The associate editor must be an expert in the Marvel Universe with deep knowledge of Marvel characters across the comic books, video games, and more. In addition to the larger universe of fandom, the description concluded. A uh, editor with deep knowledge of Marvel characters across comic books, video games, and more, huh? <laughs> this is probably be one of the first ones they hire if they do that, which is kind of funny. Uh, a lot of the editor- editors there don't know shit, and they are very pompous, and they think that they're big shit. It's, it's quite funny when most of them are are just there because like all of the male, like top dog editors there have like a female apprentice editor. It's funny. It's very, it's very funny. And most of the ones that they bring in, like come from like the weirdest backgrounds. Like one of them was like a cashier and that was all of her experience. And now she's all of a sudden 
a, a top dog editor at Marvel. So basically, uh, feel free to apply this job unless you are a straight what man. If that is the case, you are not welcome to apply for this job. In fact, Vita Ayala makes that especially clear in several tweets. Uh, black and brown people, especially femme people, please apply. The fact that people are angry that I tweeted that black and brown people should apply and call it racism is funny and sad at the same time. I hope they figure themselves out sometime soon because they are only telling them, telling on themselves with this nonsense. So it's just funny, like, and she's going to double down on this, and this is what makes this bad. Like, no one's saying that these people can't apply. Everyone can apply. But it's like telling people, like, one or two groups of people that they're not allowed to apply, that's racist. Okay. And it's funny, like, that's that it's, it's weird, this whole thing. Oh, you can't be... You can't be racist if it's just this one group. No, it is. So she says here, black and brown people, queer people, and people that are not cis dudes in any combo of the above. If you are even a little curious about being an associate editor for Marvel, click through. Apply. We're needed. And then, oh, okay. Well, if you didn't like that, if you were if you were saying everyone should be able to apply, uh, then you are the bigot. Not the person that's saying that only a specific group need not apply. You see this weird logic? Bigots loathe the idea of these people applying for this job. And apparently they despise that she is all of these things and works in the industry. Uh, I have no idea what this person's background is. No clue. All I know about Vita Ayala is that her comics are horrible. They're awful comic books. But of course, if you say even that, you know, I'm not saying anything about her background or who she is. All, all I'm saying is the comics that I've read with her name on it, where she was the writer, are awful, awful comic books. Some of the worst I think I've ever read, to be honest. And uh, if, you, if you say that, well, you, of course, are also an istophobe. But, it, you know, I just I think it's funny that if you say that this is racist, that only a certain group isn't allowed to apply for this job, you're the bigot. No one is saying that uh, these people aren't allowed to apply at this job. Everybody's allowed to apply. And there have been many great editors uh, of color and that uh, identify as women in the history of comics, and nobody has ever had a problem with that either. This weird hunt for racism is just crazy. And it's just, it's so weird to me that people that are sitting there saying, oh, you know, if you look this way, you're not allowed to apply for this job. And then if you criticize that, you're the bigot. It's, it's so strange. This is why the comic book industry is in such bad shape. And I don't, I don't see any kind of reversal happening. Maybe when comic book movies finally go into the toilet, then there, will, there really wouldn't be much of a need to keep the big two afloat anymore. The only reason they're kept afloat now is because of the fact that, well, comic book movies are huge. But when that goes down, when that wavers, they won't be so needed anymore. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. I do watch parties, play video games over there. They're always fun. Follow me over there and come hang out. Also, make sure you subscribe to Yellow Flash, my other channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. I do a lot of live streams over there that I don't do on this channel. Usually smaller and a little bit more personal. So make sure you follow me over there and sign up.